Let's begin our story in the Wu Kingdom, a beautiful and tranquil land that can be seen from above. However, inside the palace, there is an unfortunate event. An irritable woman angrily preaches to Crown Prince Wu Yu. As a consequence of his immoral and rebellious action, the reputation of the Wu Kingdom will be ruined just because of his wrongdoings. The Crown Prince's action would indeed enrage the Emperor if he were still alive. As the woman continued talking, the crown prince of Wu Kingdom, Wu Yu, who is shirtless, is holding his head because of a headache and thinks that he is just dreaming. He remembered that he would be enthroned by tomorrow but fell asleep. When he opened his eyes, he saw a woman wearing a seductive pink skinny dress with tears in her eyes, which seemed confused by what was happening around her. This woman was Consort Ming, who was one of his father's favorite concubines. Wu Yu was shocked and seemed confused as to why one of his father's favorite consorts had appeared the day before his enthronement. His deep thought was interrupted when suddenly water splashed on him. With two men behind her who seemed to have mockery in their eyes, Harim Master Consort Tsai angrily asked Wu Yu if he was already awake. Wu Yu realized that he was not dreaming and was not in his room. Because this room has a colorful phoenix carved on the bed, this is the Hall of Harmony where the former emperor favors his concubines. In addition to that, he also noticed that there were many people inside, including princes and ministers, knowing that this room was strictly forbidden for them to enter. As he continued thinking, the harem master consort Sai shoutly ordered the guard to take that adulterer and whore. Moments later, in the front hall of the Zixi Palace of the Wu Kingdom, a guard with a serious expression casually threw the crown prince and the woman in front of the hall. Above them can be seen Consort Tsai sitting in De Quattro's position on a throne, and behind them is the guard who pushed them earlier, paying respect to Consort Tsai. Wu Yu heard the three people talking behind him. A man in a yellow kimono shames the crown prince's adultery, while the other says Wu Yu is young and fresh. Consort Tsai told the guards to drag Consort Ming out of the meridian gate, and yelled that she would be executed. When the guard heard Zai's order, he went right up to Ming and tried to drag her out. Ming tried to defend herself, saying she was innocent and didn't know what had happened. As the guard dragged Ming away, Consort Zai stood up and said that her ancestor, Yuan Zai, had not been educated properly and was, therefore, guilty. One of the bystanders stated that it wasn't the consort's fault, rather, it was Wu Yu's shameless fault. The other one agreed with what he said and added that Wu Yu did not deserve to be a crown prince and does not worthy to be an emperor of the Wu kingdom. Consort Zai emphatically stated that the former king had just died, and she accused Wu Yu of having an affair with a consort. Still puzzled, Wu Yu questioningly told Zai that he and the consort earlier had committed adultery. Wu Yu realized that he didn't even know the consort's name earlier, yet he is being accused of cheating. As he sat on the floor, his body shook, he felt his muscles were weak, and he couldn't even stand up. He assumed that maybe someone had poisoned him. He turned around when someone suddenly spoke behind him and sarcastically said that Wu Yu is militaristic, merciless, violent, and has no regard for the law. He added that he is obsessed with martial arts yet has no honor as an emperor. This man was Prince Rong, who furiously accused Wu Yu while pointing at him. Wu Yu was frustrated because he knew their neighbors would still be bullying them if it weren't for him, a young warrior god of the fifth level of martial arts. In an irritable tone, Commander Wu, the man with purple hair, a mustache, and armor on both arms, remarks that Consort Ming has low status and Wu Yu would never be a prince if it weren't for the former emperor. He also humiliates Wu Yu, saying that he has the blood of the mountains and is indeed vulgar, lowly, and worse than a beast. Looking at the two, he realized that they had merged to frame him up because he whipped Prince Rong once for robbing civilian women, and in the case of Commander Wu, he sentenced him to death. All the people who are against him have set him up, but they are not capable of poisoning him, and there may be others behind the scenes. He voiced out his thoughts, but Consort Zai silenced him, warned that he had no right to argue, and ordered someone to call the immortal Hayashin. Wu Yu could not believe that the protector of the kingdom, sent from heaven to save the suffering and doesn't engage in mortal warfare, that only protects all good beings and skills demons, was also sent to the Wu kingdom. The young ministers also couldn't believe that the respected immortal was alarmed by circumstances. And based on these young ministers who murmur, this immortal is over a hundred years old, but his appearance looks like a young man, and they don't know what kind of abilities this immortal uses to keep his looks young. They couldn't believe that an immortal looked just like an average person. Their whispering was stopped when someone shouted outside the hall to lower their voices because the immortal was coming. The door opened, a shadow of a human figure could be seen, covered in smoke, and as he stepped into the hall, a man with long white hair appeared, holding a stick, and at the end of it, there was what seemed to be soft fur. It was the immortal Hayashin of the Wu Kingdom, except for Wu Yu, who was just sitting when Hayashin arrived. The people around him immediately knelt down to pay respect and greet the immortal Hayashin. When Hayashin approached, Wu Yu also greeted him with respect. 
and inside him. The supreme immortal Hayashin is a person of great righteousness and is highly respected by his father, so he is sure that Hayashin will give him justice. Hayashin asked Consort Zai what happened within the kingdom. She explained Wu Yu's adultery and asked the evildoer to be punished. Hayashin declared that a kingdom should not be ruled by a domineering person who disturbs the order of things. Without questioning, Hayashin sentenced Wu Yu to be removed from the throne because of his immoral behavior. He also adds that starting today, Wu Yu's martial arts training will be abolished, and he will be sent to the army. Wu Yu is in disbelief that Hayashin passed judgment on him without consulting him first. He concluded that no one could defeat him in the Wu kingdom, and only Hayashin could suppress him. Consequently, the higher-ups in the palace sided with each other, and Hayashin was behind it all. Hayashin interrupted his conclusions when he suddenly asked him if there was anything else he wanted to say. Wu Yu bravely said that he lived without fear nor regret, now that the immortals wish to destroy him, he has nothing else to say. He realized that the immortal who represented the will of heaven had turned out to be a malicious and ruthless person. He laughed in vain, and one of the ministers shouted at him and told him he had no respect and dared to laugh in front of the immortal. Hayashin took out a pouch bag containing soul-severing powder that could cut off the meridians and abolish a person's cultivation. He ordered the guards to make Wu Yu drink it. The two guards quickly followed Hayashin's order and forced Wu Yu to drink the soul-severing powder. Wu Yu was full of grief as he knelt on the ground helplessly. In this life, he was the strongest mortal in the Wu kingdom. Still, he could not compete with Hayashin, a superior immortal. If there is an afterlife, he wants revenge. His ten years of hard work were all wasted. He passed out after being compelled to take the concoction. A few hours later, as Wu Yu stood in a prisoner carriage, surrounded by warrior guards, leaving the palace, a worried woman ran up to him and called his name. She was his sister. Her name was Princess Wu Wu. Wu Yu tells his sister he can't do anything right now because heaven wants him to die. He told his sister not to worry because, in this unfair world, he would die with a clear conscience. Even though she was confused, she believed in her brother. Wu Yu said he would still be her brother even in his next life. Because of the last thing he said, his sister's feelings were heavy. She couldn't do anything for her brother except cry and kneel as she watched him leave. Two hours later, somewhere in the mountains, surrounded by snow, in a prisoner carriage, Wu Yu felt like he was going to die due to the weakness of his body and the cold weather. As he loses consciousness, what he feels is full of hatred and anger. He swore that if he died and were reborn, he would take revenge on the immortal Hayashin and Consort Zai. When he lost consciousness, the guards realized he was already dead. Consequently, they picked up his body and threw it off a cliff. When he fell to the bottom of the cliff, his gold-colored iron stick pendant clung to his body, lit up, and was absorbed by his body. His unconscious body floated, and it seemed that a circular wave sound came out from the pendant. Inside his lifeless body, a huge golden stick pillar appeared before him. He covered his ears when it released a loud noise, and a figure similar to Wukong came out. He introduced himself as the great sage of the heavenly palace and the heavenly Buddha and said, If you have a destiny, pass my teaching against the sky and destroy the earth. On the other hand, inside the Wu kingdom, as consort Zai is still on her knees, she thanks her master Hayashin a lot. Hayashin told her there was nothing to thank for, besides, she was one of his disciples. To a cultivator, the abolition of a prince is a mundane matter. He informed consort Zai that he would give the order to let Yuan Hao take the throne the next day. As she put her palm and fist together, she thanked Hayashin with a smile and said she would serve him well. Hayashin approached her, held her chin, and let her know that Yuan Hao was his family. Even if he lacked the talent to be a cultivator, he couldn't let him live an ordinary life. In a worried tone, she reminded Hayashin that Wu Yu was very skillful. Although he was sent to the army, she worried Wu Yu would rise again. Hayashin assured her that Wu Yu would not survive because he ordered Wang King to intercept and eliminate him. Hence, they no longer face any danger. Consort Zai felt relieved at his words. Meanwhile, somewhere in the mountain, as Wu Yu regained consciousness, he couldn't believe he was still alive. When he got up, he noticed that the effect of the Soul Breaker had disappeared. He can't accept that his fifth heaven martial arts training might just be wasted, including forging flesh, grinding tendons, bone refining, internal strength, and blood transfusion. Everything he had trained for a long time was now destroyed. He is still baffled about his nightmare and the iron rod. He remembers when he was five years old, his mother died, and he was lonely. After that, an old man came to his window every night to tell stories. He wanted to see the old man, but when he went out, he disappeared. After a year, one night, the old man came in and threw a small rod. The old man told him to always keep the iron rod with him, because it will keep him alive for a long time. Consequently, he happily thanks the old man. Back to the present, now that the iron stick is gone, he assumes that the old man is the Kai Tan Dos Age in his dream. 
but it's not the right time to think about those matters. He needs to try to cultivate the Vajra's body of immortality first, so he sits in a lotus position and focuses on his cultivation. The first layer of the first level of the Vajra's body would be Vajra forging flesh, from the Kai out of Hyugai to the cloud door, down to the middle house. After an extreme focus on cultivation, he tried his strength and destroyed a tree using his knee. After that, he went back to his cultivation. Four days later, after cultivating Vajra forging flesh, he tried his strength, he punched the big stone, and the stone shattered in one blow using a single hand. He is very pleased that he accomplished the first level of martial arts. Now his strength is equivalent to the strength of three war horses, and it's already three times the strength of the first martial heaven. He was significantly amazed by the technique he learned, he felt his muscles strengthened, and he is now fully recovered. He didn't waste time and prepared for the second level, Vajra's tendon. He continued enhancing his body and training hard within six days. On the seventh day, he finally completed the second layer, Vajra's tendon, and he felt that it was so powerful. His strength could be compared to more than five ordinary martial artists. Now he has the power of ten war horses, and his full power is almost close to the fourth level of martial arts. As he enjoyed the growth of his strength, he suddenly smelled something strange. When he turned around, he saw a giant snake. A blue cloud of smoke emerged as it transformed into a human form. A beautiful curvy woman's body appeared before him. This is Wan King, a disciple of the Supreme Immortal, raised by the Kingdom Protector. She is also the reason why thousands of people in the Wu Kingdom have disappeared in the past ten years. She came to fulfill Heashin's order to ensure that Wu Yu would be erased from the world. He mocked Wan King, saying that she could not defeat him alone. However, Wan King assured him that she was no match for him before because he was the only martial artist in the Wu Kingdom at the fifth level. Consequently, he was more potent than her before. Still, now, Wen King is confident that in Wu Yu's current condition, she can defeat him because she knows that his meridian has been cut due to the soul-severing powder that Heashin made him drink. Wearing a high of confidence, Wen King immediately rushed forward. Unfortunately, Wu Yu only dodged her first attack, retaliated with a blow directly to her stomach with a sparkling impact on his back, and threw her away. Wen King winced in pain and couldn't believe that Wu Yu was so strong, although she knew his meridian had been cut. Wu Yu seized the opportunity, he rushed toward Wan King, unleashing a mighty blow that sent her crashing into a tree. But he wasn't done yet, he jumped to attack again. Wen King quickly transformed into a giant snake and threatened to eat Wu Yu. But our hero didn't budge and kicked the giant snake, then he rode on its head and hit it with a stone. The snake cried in pain and begged to spare her life. But Wu Yu doesn't care about her and plans to finish her off. However, before Wu Yu delivered the finishing blow, she shouted that she would reveal the secret about Wu Yu's father's death. Wen King informs him that Hyoshin and Consort Zai are behind his father's death. They use many poison pills that they put in his father's food to slowly kill him. What he heard astounded him, and his anger was shaking him. He felt so angry that he crushed the stone he was holding. The snake saw the opportunity to act, she pushed him away using her head. Wu Yu was thrown into the cliff due to the impact and fell into the Babo River. Wan King breathed a sigh of relief, she was sure Wu Yu had been erased from the world. Because no mortal can survive after falling into the Babo River at that height, she was sure his mission was over, even if she didn't carry a corpse. Sometimes later, Wu Yu woke up in a room, holding his chest, wondering where he was. An old man carrying a tray of tea noticed that he was awake. Wu Yu remembered the man who gave him the iron rod because he had the same voice as the old man, so he asked if he had seen him ten years ago. While pouring tea into a cup, the old man informed him that he had been in the mountain for eighty years and had not come out, so it was impossible for them to have met. As the old man handed him a cup of tea, he discovered he was at the immortal gate. Consequently, he was surprised. The old man asked him if he had heard about Zionmen, the sect of cultivating immortals. Wu Yu informed him that only a few people know about Zionmen because immortal cultivators do not interfere in worldly affairs. Wu Yu thanked him for saving his life and introduced himself. The old man also introduced himself as Sun Wudao and informed him that he was not the one who saved Wu Yu, but rather the head teacher, and explained the head teacher arranged for him to become a handyman in that place. As he drank a cup of ginseng soup, he noticed that ginseng in Zionmen is truly exceptional. Soon after, Wu Dao told him to follow him. He stepped outside and was awestruck by the Tiangshan sect, a glittering floating area that looked like a fairyland on earth. Based on Wu Dao, most of the Taoism in the immortal sect is related to the sword, that's why they called the floating place Tongshan Sword School. Zionmen is located in the mountain of the Blue Waves, dominating the land of several countries' ascetics, an amount comparable to a small country. Wu Dao handed Wu Yu a uniform, and while they were walking, he told about Zongmen. 
The strongest in the Tongshan Sword Sect is the head teacher, the legendary Jindan Immortal. After him are the elders, then the core disciples, and finally, the outer disciples. But there is a difference in status between the core disciples and the outer disciples. The number of outer disciples is 100 times the number of core disciples. However, most of the disciples are handymen in the mountain taking care of food and living the daily life of ascetics, feeding spirit beasts, planting fairy spirits, and cleaning palaces. The core disciple has hundreds of servants, and the outer disciple has ten. All servants cannot leave without permission unless they reach the sixth level of mortal body training before age 15. At the sixth level of martial arts, they will have the opportunity to pass the assessment, and become a formal disciple. Consequently, they will no longer be handymen and can start cultivating immortality. Wu Dao felt sorry for himself because he was unable to become one of the immortals. It can be seen in a picture that a child happily declares that he is now one of the outer disciples and that he will be able to cultivate immortality. Wu Yu realized he'd be 16 in two months, if not for the soul-severing powder that Hayashin forced him to drink, he'd be able to enter the sixth level of martial arts in a few days. Wu Dao reminded him that the most important rule as a handyman is not to upset the immortals. It doesn't matter if he is an outer disciple because he can be killed. As he looked into the sky, Wu Yu agreed with the old man's advice. Wu Dao noticed an immortal in the sky named Su Yanli Shanxian, the peak master of their Yanli peak. He immediately bowed Wu Yu's head. Su Yanli Shanxian was the direct disciple of the head teacher and had the highest status among the core disciples. The old man breathed a sigh of relief because the immortal didn't notice Wu Yu not bowing. Otherwise, he would have died for not respecting the immortals. Wu Yu realized that the path to the immortal was even more dangerous. He learned from the old man that the assessment would be held in two months. When they arrived at the fairy beast garden, the old man instructed him that their task, for now, was to take care of the fairy beasts. They were greeted by an arrogant man named Zhao Chuan, a chief handyman with two disciples. He asked the old man who was with him, and Wu Dao answered him politely. Zhao Chuan thought that if the old man's companion was the one saved by the head teacher in the Bibo River, he was probably strong because he managed to survive. He decided to find out the details from Wu Yu and ask our hero to show his capabilities. Wu Dao disagreed with Zhao Chuan's plan and explained that Wu Yu's body had not fully recovered. Moreover, Zhao Chuan was at the fourth level of mortal body training, and it was unfair for someone weaker than him to fight him. Consequently, Zhao Chuan was annoyed and let them be. He threatened them that their lives would be exchanged for it if they did not complete their task. He shouted that some Shanxians were visiting the place to check their cranes. He warned them they would take their dog to fill it up if an accident occurred. At the same time, in the air, four immortals are talking while riding their big cranes. The man said that he came to see his senior sister Su Yanli to learn the method of immortality, and he asked the pink-dressed woman if she had brought a thank-you gift. The woman insulted him by saying he just wanted to bring a thank-you present because he feared being criticized by Su Yanli for his recent poor training. As the cranes landed on the ground, the man just laughed at the woman's words. On the other hand, Wu Dao reminded him to bow down and not look directly at the immortals. When the immortals passed him, Wu Yu realized that if it weren't for the soul-severing powder, he would have been one of the immortals. By late afternoon, while Wu Yu was sweeping, on the other hand, an immortal Sidu Jin, who was an outer disciple, was furious when he saw that his crane was lifeless. Zhao Chuan pointed at Wu Yu and accused him of serving Sidu Jin's crane. Zhao Chuan secretly smiled strangely after accusing Wu Yu, but Wu Yu emphatically denied the accusation against him. Sidu Jin didn't even listen to Wu Yu and whipped him angrily. Wu Yu crumpled to the ground, and Sidu Jin insulted him. Wu Dao intervened, he took the blame and begged to spare Wu Yu. Still, Wu Yu knows that Zhao Chuan is targeting him, so he won't let the old man get involved. Remarkably, Wu Yu boldly said that only one was guilty and that only one should take responsibility, regardless of what happened. Sidu Jin smiled with a hint of annoyance, he hates people who are useless yet dare to show bravery. The woman even pointed out that Wu Yu should be finished off to set an example for other servants. Sidu Jin agreed with her and whipped Wu Yu with all his strength, sending him flying and destroying whatever he had collided with. After concluding that Wu Yu was no longer alive, the two immortals decided to leave. On the other hand, Wu Yu was still alive and bearing the injury he received from Sidu Jin's whip. Because of his humiliation and oppression, he is determined to join the Zion men and plan to take revenge, especially on Zhao Chuan, who framed and accused him, he will not let him escape. The old man worriedly ran to him and advised him not to hold a grudge against the immortals, for the reason that mortals cannot fight against immortals. But in Wu Yu's case, it is not easy to forget what happened, he asked the old man why he was so kind to him. Unfortunately, the old man's life has been like this from the start, and he has no desire for Wu Yu to experience the same bullying that he has. However, Wu Yu cannot assure him of anything in this matter. As he now possesses Wu Kong's invincible body, he intends to join the Zion men and exact his vengeance. After only ten days of rigorous training, he had nearly reached the third level of Wu Kong's invincible body, 
and was not far from becoming a golden flame bone. A few seconds later, he became aware that he was being observed. It turned out to be Zhao Qiuan with a few other disciples. They felt something strange about Wu Yu because they knew he was weak but managed to survive the powerful whipping of an immortal. They just assumed that our hero was just lucky. Zhao Qiuan suspected Wu Yu of possessing some secret books or pills and threatened to release them. Otherwise, they would kill him. Wu Yu let them know that he had nothing to give them. He knew that Zhao Qiuan was at the fourth level of body training which had strength comparable to 20 horses and was twice his power. It will be challenging for him if they fight each other now. A disciple mockingly stated that they would finish Wu Yu for being stubborn and requested permission from Zhao Chuan to crush our hero's face so that he would never be able to speak properly again. He dashed forward, gathered a whirlwind in his fist, and declared to his master that he would send Wu Yu to heaven in one punch. However, he remains unfazed and waits for him to approach. He dodges the punch and kicks the disciple in the stomach. The disciple vomited blood and was thrown back. Zhao Chuan can't believe in his power, so he instructs his disciple to attack simultaneously and avenge their fallen comrade. Nonetheless, Wu Yu is still undaunted. He swiftly punches the blue hair one, smacks the head of the purple hair one into the ground, punches the face of the gray hair man, blows the chest of the green hair disciple using his knee, and kicks the last one. As he watches his comrade getting defeated, he realizes that Wu Yu isn't an ordinary handyman and notices that his body moves are very professional with a solid body. Consequently, he must give his best to defeat him. On the other hand, Wu Yu is astounded by his invincible Vajra body and feels so powerful that even a simple attack cannot harm him. He provoked Zhao Chuan to fight him. Nonetheless, Zhao Chuan is confident with his sword that our hero cannot match him. However, Wu Yu is very positive. He clenches his fist and dashes forward using his flame tiger. Zhao Chuan patiently awaits his attack and informs him that he is unaware of his own strength. He dodges Wu Yu's punch, sways his sword, and lets him know that if he thinks anyone can be the boss in the Immortal Beast Garden, he is wrong because no fool can be appointed as a boss in the Immortal Beast Garden. Seeing the advantage of their master, the disciples become hyped and cheer for their master. The blue hair man encourages his master to finish Wu Yu off, and the gray hair guy suggests they must get the treasure first. Consequently, the blue hair man agrees with his companion. On the other hand, Wu Yu notices Zhao Chuan's power, he is already in the inner strength realm. His internal organs have been forged, and his breath is long, so it's not easy for Wu Yu to deal with him. On the contrary, because Wu Yu is the old man's companion, the two disciples have evil plans for Wu Dao. After their boss defeats Wu Yu, they will throw Wu Dao off the black gut cliff and feed him to the crows. Back to the fight scene, Zhao Chuan agreed with the advice of the two idiots, what I mean is his two disciples. Anyway, Zhao Chuan uses the pearly blossom sword technique and attack Wu Yu from a distance. His technique launches a simultaneous wind blade. Fortunately, Wu Yu used his monkey and ape ghost stances to dodge the wind blades. Now that the old man is involved in his fight, he is determined to fight to the death so he and Wu Dao can survive. The problem is his opponent knows a national treasure grade martial art worthy of the immortal sect. He continued to dodge the attack. His opponent got irritated and mocked him because he only knew how to dodge. Zhao Chuan gets full of him and swiftly attacks from behind. Wu Yu notice him, but it's too late for him to dodge. Zhao Chuan slashes him and crashes into the tree. Fortunately, his Vajra Invincible Body's third layer, Vajra's Bone, has already developed golden bones. Otherwise, that attack would have killed him. As he leans against the tree, Zhao Chuan and his disciple approach him. The disciples suggest that Wu Yu be tortured until he tells the truth, then thrown on the mountain and fed to wolves. Zhao Chuan raised his sword and swayed it to Wu Yu. But unexpectedly, Wu Yu stopped his sword with his hand. They were shocked and couldn't believe that Wu Yu was so powerful. As he held the sword in his left hand, he released his blue dragon fist and punched Zhao Chuan in the face. As he fell to the ground, dripping blood and with a grimace on his face, Zhao Chuan could not explain what kind of creature our hero was. After he defeated Zhao Chuan, he breathed a sigh of relief. The sword would have broken his hand if it wasn't for Vajra's bone breakthrough. Now that the five little monkeys who are jumping on the bed, the one fell out and bumped his head. But they didn't have a mama to call the doctor and will said, Awa, Coco, get out of my head. Anyway, let's get back to our story. Fear, shock, disbelief, and stuttering grip the four disciples. They threatened Wu Yu that according to the rules of the Tongshan Sword sect, he would be executed because he killed their master. Wu Yu reminded them of what they'd said earlier. After killing him, they'd throw Wu Dao into the black gut cliff and feed him to the crows. He pointed his sword at them, and the disciple denied his accusation that he might hear them wrong. Wu Yu gets full of them and slays them using their master sword, claiming that in his life, he only killed two kinds of people, the most treacherous, wicked, and those with deep-seated hatred. And these bastards are feet in the requirement. As he stands, looking at his left hand, he was grateful to the great sage of Kai Tian and the Buddha of Victory for giving him a new life. He then hides Zhao Chuan's sword to use when taking the entrance exam. 
But unbeknownst to him, a woman behind the tree witnessed everything. It turned out to be Su Yanli, she wondered what kind of training he had done and was able to defeat Zhao Chuan. On the other hand, Wu Yu is sure that in the current recovery level of Vajra's body, most of his wounds should be healed by tomorrow morning. However, the injuries on his hands should not be seen by Wu Dao, so he does not get worried. When he arrived at the house he was staying at, he realized that Wu Dao should be asleep now. Upon entering the house, he notices a letter and reads it. He promised himself that he would complete the unfulfilled wish of the old man by entering the examination. And after that, he will not let go of those who deceived and harmed him. Two days later, at the main peak of Babo, Tongshan Peak. In the Tongshan Immortal Palace, Su Yanli reported Wu Yu's actions, and his master asked her what he planned to do. She explained that Wu Yu was not guilty of anything but guilty of something. Based on the teachings of his master, the immortal way is the way of predation. So, she wants to take Wu Yu. The Tongshan Sword Sect Master Fang Suya explained to her that his principle is that the Babo Peak is a great method that can covet any handyman disciple's technique. With his ways of cultivation and a guaranteed teacher, she will be able to reach the golden core stage and even the level of a teacher. She agreed with his master and let him know that from now on, she would concentrate on cultivating her master's Tongshan Sword Dao. Her master was impressed by her words and asked her to join him in having the ambition to take care of the world. Although the immortal path is dangerous, it must also be worthy of the heart. Bullying the weak is not his principle. He gives his permission for her to leave and informs him that Wu Yu is destined to be an immortal, since he is a member of her peak, it's worthy to take good care of him. Su Yanli politely agrees with her master, saying that she understands. One month later, Wu Dao is concerned about Wu Yu and advises him not to go out and just rest. From what he knows, Zhao Chuan and his disciple died due to a demon going berserk. With a bright smile, he told him not to worry since he would just stay near the fairy beast garden. He wouldn't go far and ask Wu Dao to remind him when it was time to work. The old man agreed and reminded him to be careful. As he leaves the house, he is glad the old man was so nice and treated him like his own son. He wants the old man to be proud of him, so he plans to surpass everyone. Somewhere in the beast garden, as he sits in a lotus position, cultivating the Vajra physique fourth level, the five spiritual viscera. In this cultivation, he needs to separate the pure gold spirit, purple gold spirit, yellow gold spirit, white gold spirit, and the black gold spirit and fuse them into his five viscera for this to be perfect. He must first tear his five viscera before fusing them. As he tears his five viscera, he feels so much pain but is determined to be immortal, so there is no space for failure. Moments later, he finally achieves the mortal body refinement realm stage 4, the five spiritual viscera. He didn't expect to be able to perfectly complete the fourth level of the mortal body, which had the equivalent strength of 134 horses, and it was even stronger than the typical refinement stage 6. While holding the sword, he reminded himself that this was his final day as a handyman because it was time to enter the immortal gate the next day. A few moments later, Wu Dao arrived and informed him it was time for work. Wu Yu politely responded that he understood. As they do their task, the worried old man reminds him not to go anywhere again, or he might end up like Zhao Chuan's group. Wu Yu agreed, informed the old man that the entrance exam was tomorrow, and asked if he would watch. The old man replied that he would. At the same time, in the air, while the immortals were riding their big cranes, Sidu Jin's eyes glinted as he looked down. When Wu Yu saw the coming immortals, Wu Dao advised him to hurry to hide. Still, it was too late because the immortals had already noticed him. As the immortal lands on the ground, the old man tells Wu Yu to find a way to escape. An immortal man pointed at Wu Yu, and Sidu Jin explained that when he whipped Wu Yu, he used a bit of strength yet survived. And they just assumed that Wu Yu was lucky. Sidu Jin approached the two and mocked Wu Yu for still being alive. Wu Yu thought the power gap between him and Sidu Jin was not that far, but he still decided to avoid causing trouble. Hence, he politely greeted the immortal, informed him that he struggled to stay alive, and thanked him for having mercy. Sidu Jin sighed at Wu Yu's unexpected greeting. Hua Kian Yu, a female immortal and student disciple from the outer sect, interrupted and chided Sidu Jin for being weak, saying he couldn't even beat a slave for half a day. If it's her crane that gets hurt, she'll have no problem torturing the culprit. Sidu Jin agreed with her and explained to Wu Yu that it is not so easy to forget what happened because his crane vomited. If he eats shit, he will let him go. Wu Dao interjected, saying that since he was the one who brought Wu Yu, he should eat the shit. Wu Yu intervened to protect the old man and said to ignore them. Consequently, Sidu Jin got angry and told Wu Yu he had no right to go against his orders. Wu Yu argued that even a slave could not be insulted like this. He doesn't want to make trouble, but he's not afraid of trouble. The three handymen who are witnessing the scene believe that this is the end of Wu Yu. They also know that Zhao Chuan framed Wu Yu into this mess. Sidu Jin raised his whip, but before he whipped Wu Yu, he flew away and crashed into the rock. In the aftermath of the blow, he was surrounded by smoke and demanded to know who had the nerve to attack him. Just as his front became visible, Su Yanli appeared. 
His mouth opened wide, and he wondered why the woman was there. Su Yanli explained that this is her territory, and the three of them are no longer allowed to go to her territory. Sidu Jin argued that Wu Yu was just a lowly slave. However, Su Yanli dictated that Wu Yu was part of her peak, and if he needs to be punished, she should do it herself, not him. He warned Su Yanli that his 13-year-old brother Sidu Mingling had already reached the peak of the body refinement stage, and his talent was much better than hers. Hua Kain Yu added that the protection sect sovereign is ready to accept Sidu Mingling as a disciple. In the future, his status will exceed hers. With fierce eyes, she asked them if they were threatening her. The three immortals quickly turned around and rode their crane. Sidu Jin explained that he wouldn't dare threaten her, he just said he would leave Yanli Peak. But deep inside him, he is shaking in anger and wants to take revenge when his brother becomes the son of heaven. Wu Yu politely thanked Su Yanli and she replied that it was nothing. As the woman flew away, Wu Yu realized that Mingling, who was 13, had already reached the pinnacle of martial arts and defied heaven's laws. But Wu Yu, who is 15, is only in the fifth stage of martial arts. The old man breathed a sigh of relief because he thought he would not be able to watch the exam tomorrow and realized that the entrance exam of the Ascension Peaks was quite far away and suggested to Wu Yu that they leave tonight. Wu Yu tells Wu Dao not to worry because he will carry him to the Ascension Peak. Wu Yu thinks he must win the exam to change his life. At the Ascension Peak, the viewers are already excited about the exam. Wu Yu explained to the old man that the participant disciple must start from the bottom of the peak to compete, and from here, the old man can watch the whole thing. Wu Dao thanked him and jokingly said that he could see the genius that would succeed in his position. Before he left, Wu Yu said with a bright smile that he would tell everything that would happen in his exam. The old man agreed with him. Wu Yu then went to the bottom of the peak with a smile. At the bottom of the peak, in the registration area. After registering, the examiner took him to the first test. The first test is to measure strength by restraining the horse. When the examiner knew Wu Yu was ready, he whipped a horse, causing it to run. But our hero didn't even break a sweat in the first test. After passing the first test, the examiner handed him a red fire charm that he could use in times of danger. He just needs to destroy it, and the disciple will come to save him. He added that he could withdraw voluntarily. The examiner informed him that he could now go to the first level, the road to immortality. When he arrived at the said place, he thought the number of participants in the examination was around 300, and he had to be serious. On the other hand, at the mountaintop of the immortal platform, while Wu Dao turned his head to look for Wu Yu, he realized that the test on the road to immortality was about to start, but he did not see Wu Yu yet. In a small floating hut in the same area, Elder Mu Ji asked Su Yanli if she had any excellent servants. She informed him that there was one, and it was Wu Yu. As far as Elder Mu Ji knew, she didn't pay attention to ordinary servants, and he was curious about what was so special about Wu Yu. She clarified that she wanted to know how special Wu Yu was, so she came to see him. Because of what he heard, the old man decided to pay attention to the servant. In the sky, while riding the big crane, Hua Kai and Yu irritably said that what is so interesting about the lowly servants and they are just wasting time. Sidu Jin defended himself by saying that they just came to watch the participants for fun. An immortal told them not to be too proud and informed them that three appraisal disciples were in the seventh level of the body forging realm, which was one level stronger than them. Sidu Jin said his brother is also in the seventh level. An immortal from behind suggests they guess which of the three will get out of the gate because he feels bored. On the road to immortality, a participant named Lin asked his companions if they knew the three people who were the strongest in the examination. The other replied that he was too young and begged to introduce them to him. The other one agreed and added that Lin was the chief of the core disciples. Lin pointed to a boy with a sword behind him. His name is Zhao Danlong. He had the seventh level of body forging, equivalent to the strength of 200 battle horses. He is apparently 14 years old and has already achieved the status of being a great swordsman. Then there was the man in red, and it was Jeju, who had the seventh level of body forging and was raised by a tiger in a wilderness mountain. He is good at the eight stances of demon killing and the phantom snake steps. The last one is the girl named King Meng. She is 12 years old, and her Yu Cushion sword shadow and footwork are very powerful. Wu Yu is amazed that a 12-year-old has already achieved the seventh level of body forging. When the participant arrived at the gate of the road to immortality, the examiner in black explained to them what they would be going through. They will face three waves of powerful monsters close to becoming demons. The monsters are dangerous. If their lives are in danger, they can use the red fire talisman, and the examiners will save them. Out of all 300 participants, only 100 could participate in the next level of the exam, which was the Battle of the Immortal Platform. As he held his fan, he reminded the participants that they could only exit the road to immortality after completing the test. Now that the time has come, and they are on the road to immortality, they only need to remember one word, kill. 
After explaining, the participants shouted kill simultaneously and entered the gate. In the jungle, the participants are very thrilled to exterminate the monsters. While running, Zhao Danlong declared that he would destroy all monsters on the road to immortality. Meanwhile, Wu Yu was simply walking and thinking about the strategy. Considering he didn't know the abilities of the monsters in the area, he planned not to rush. Some participants are frightened when they first encounter the red horn gnarled snake. The participants, including Zhao Danlong, sprinted to kill the snake. One of the participants gets bit by the snake, and the other participant attacks the snake's body. As Wu Yu expected, the snake demon is enormous. A snake tried to attack him from behind, but he noticed it and pierced its body with a sword. Zhao Danlong commended him and told him he would be the first in the exam. He added that the Kai Condensation Pill would also be his reward as he ran away. Wu Yu realized whoever took the lead would receive a Kai Condensation Pill as a reward, so he decided to be first in the exam so that Wu Dao would be proud of him. Inside the Crocodile Swamp, before they could get into the final wave, they had to cross the crocodile first by jumping over the rock submerged in the swamp water and surrounded by giant crocodiles. As Wu Yu jumped forward, he noticed a crocodile would attack the girl in red. He warned her, but it was already too late, and the crocodile bit her skirt. Luckily Wu Yu is quick to react, he stabs the crocodile in the head, then grabs the girl, and they jump back to the rock. The girl thanked him for saving her life. He continued to jump forward, advising her to be careful next time. The examiner reminds the girl to use the talisman the next time she is in danger. Wu Yu and other participants arrive at the final wave of the road to immortality, the underground cave. The giant demon ape inhabits this cave. One of the apes rushes toward Wu Yu, their fists clash, and an impact from their punch can be seen. The ape is strong, but it's not much for him, the only problem is their number and it's impossible to wipe them out. He realizes that the final wave is about the test of footwork. Wu Yu saw the arrival of the three and was aware of their capabilities. If he doesn't do something, he will fall to fourth place. Zhao Danlong remarks that the demon apes can absorb blood energy, since the casualties are too many, their blood is absorbed, and the ape becomes stronger. King Ming rushed first and jumped toward the ape, and when she was in mid-air, she realized that the demon ape was too big. The giant ape unleashed a powerful blow, and King Ming was unable to dodge it, causing her to fall back to the ground, and dust came out due to the impact. While handling the pain, she informed them that a single person couldn't handle the ape's strength. Consequently, the three agreed that they would attack at the same time. The three got ready and took their positions using their respective techniques. King Ming is surrounded by a pink aura using her Kingyun sword technique. Juju is surrounded by a green aura using his demon slaying eight forms, and Zhao Danlong uses a cloud soaring form. The three of them attacked simultaneously, and they were able to damage the big demon ape. With every cut they made on the ape's body, green blood came out. Due to the simultaneous attacks of the three, the ape had no choice but to protect his head with his arms. As the three continued to attack, Wu Yu thought of a way to finish the ape and be the first to get out on the road to immortality. While thinking, the ape suddenly got furious and went into berserk mode. It releases blood mist, which damages the skin when it touches a person. As a result, Zhao Danlong ordered the two to get back. As the three were thrown away due to the impact of the ape's berserkness, Wu Yu saw his chance to defeat the ape. The blood mist from the ape does not affect him because he has Vajra's body, and he is determined to be the first in this exam. Moments later, on the immortal platform, in the floating small hut, Elder Muji noticed that the participants seemed to be in the third wave. He asked Su Yanli who she thought would be the first to come out. Based on this exam, the third wave is to test the footwork. So she feels that King Ming will be the first because her footwork can be compared to top grade martial arts. The old man thinks Jeju will be the first because he grew up on a mountain with beasts. Among the viewers, the fat one predicted that Zhao Danlong would be the first to come out because of his 13 sword skill. The other bet is King Ming because of its sword reflection technique. Another said they shouldn't focus on the three as someone might be better than them. Meanwhile, Wu Dao is worried about Wu Yu. The spectators stood up when they noticed someone coming from the road to immortality. When they saw the first one that came out, they asked who it was because they had never seen him before. Su Yanli, on the other hand, was stunned, gaping, and in disbelief when she saw that Wu Yu was the first to come out, knowing that Wu Yu had taken a lot of effort just to defeat Zhao Chuan. Elder Mu Ji was also stunned because a new face was the first to come out, so he told Su Yanli that it looked like this was Wu Yu that she mentioned. Although his ability is unique, he seems like he's older compared to the other participants. Su Yanli didn't answer him directly because she was still dumbfounded and wondering what Wu Yu did and was able to take the lead. Underneath the small floating hut, Wu Dao noticed someone familiar to him was the first to come out. 
The fat handyman informed him that it was Wu Yu. When the old man looked closely, he realized it was really Wu Yu. He speculated he might have lost his way and unexpectedly ended up on the immortal platform stage. He foolishly asked the fat handyman what they were going to do. But the fat man reassured him that Wu Yu came from the road to immortality, so there was nothing to worry about. The old man couldn't believe what the fat handyman said because he didn't expect Wu Yu to be able to lead the exam. On the stage platform, Wu Yu happily waves to the old man and says he managed to lead the third level of the exam. The fat man and Wu Da were pleased with Wu Yu's achievement. From the air, Hua Kai and Yu pointed to Wu Yu, and before she could finish what she had to say, Sidu Jin disappointedly informed her that he had seen it too. An immortal coughed before speaking, explaining that Wu Yu was weak when Sidu Jin whipped him. Still, now he has managed to lead the road to immortality. He also assumed that Wuyu might have a strange plan. Hua Kai and Yu added that Wuyu might take revenge on Sidu Jin. Sidu Jin said irritably that he thought maybe Wuyu, a lowly handyman, was lucky to lead the exam. He added that they would continue to observe if Wuyu was able to pass Immortal Ascension. From the floating hut, Elder Muji warmly congratulated Wuyu for being able to take the lead in completing the Road to Immortality test. He informed them that Wu Yu's name would be engraved in the history of the Great Sword sect. After speaking, the crowd cheered happily, while Wu Yu, who was standing, smiled as he took the first step to victory. Wu Dao, on the other hand, could not explain the overwhelming joy at what Wu Yu had achieved. A few seconds later, the three emerged from the road to immortality. Zhao Danlong angrily declared that Wu Yu was shameless for taking the kill that should have been his and threatened to kill him. When he turned around, he quickly blocked Zhao Danlong's attack with his sword. Elder Muji angrily warns them they should stop, anyone violating the rules will be disqualified. Zhao Danlong gritted his teeth as he stopped the attack and threatened Wu Yu to wait, and they would settle again. Inside Wu Yu's mind, he knew it was clean and without deception what he did to defeat the demon ape using his skills and Vajra's body. After a while, 100 participants were complete, and the chaotic battle with many variables was about to begin. The next test is the Immortal Ascension fight. Anyone who falls on the stage and uses a red fire talisman will be disqualified until only 30 participants are left, and killing is strictly prohibited. As usual, to succeed, they must hold the immortal ball until the incense burns out. There are three great prizes for whoever succeeds in keeping the immortal ball. The first prize is to pass the core exam directly, the second is a Kai condensing pill, and the third is to receive a top-grade common demon slaying sword with a power comparable to a common magic weapon. Based on the viewer's murmurs, only the immortals with the golden core can refine the Kai condensing pill. Being a core disciple is not that easy to achieve. The demon slaying sword has extreme power, it is a magic weapon that only immortals have the ability to use, and they added that the sect has spent a large budget just for the prizes. Elder Muji threw the immortal ball into the air as a signal that the immortal ascension had begun. The participant prepared to catch the ball. When the ball was about to fall to Wu Yu's location, he thought that if he caught the ball, he would be surrounded and run out of energy keeping the ball with him. So he planned to avoid the ball and save energy. When he moved away from his position, the participants rushed to grab the ball and fought each other to get it. When he turned around, he noticed an angry man holding an axe, ready to attack him. The axe man angrily stated that he had some courage to anger his lord Zhao Danlong and have shame to stay in the exam. On the other hand, the fat handyman loudly informed the other handyman that Zhao Danlong's junior brother had made a move to attack Wu Yu. A thin handyman with purple hair told them that the man who rushed at Wu Yu had six stages of body forging, and with his innate strength, Wu Yu would indeed be destroyed. One added that this is precisely what happens when there is a conflict with a high-profile person. Back on stage, Wu Yu uses the first form of his eastern sea whale slaying sword to counterattack the axe man. Their weapons clashed, and Wu Yu's wind-breaking technique released a blue impact. He lost his axe and can't believe a simple handyman has defeated him. Wu Yu jumped forward and kicked him, as a result, he was sent outside the arena, and the other participant caught their attention. On the other hand, in the air, Hua Kai and Yu reminded Sidu Jin that Wu Yu easily defeated a person with the sixth level of the body forging realm. She was afraid that Wu Yu was on the same level as them. Sidu Jin, who still doesn't accept Wu Yu's power, confidently says that Wu Yu's tactic is just a trick, and when they face each other, he will finish him off with just two or three strikes. While munching on watermelon on the platform, the chubby handyman remarked to the old man how impressive Wu Yu's strength was, which the old man happily agreed with. On the other hand, the man in green pointed to Zhao Danlong. He informed his companions that Zhao Danlong was already holding the immortal ball. The man in the middle knew that Zhao Danlong was one of the three strongest among the participants. Still, he wondered if Zhao Danlong would last long enough to hold the immortal ball. The other man agreed with him as he saw that Zhao Danlong was already surrounded. On the stage, Zhao Danlong easily defeats those who try to steal the immortal ball from him using his fierce sword technique. The opponents are knocked off the stage. Jezu saw the opportunity to attack Zhao Danlong. 
He punched him in the face, causing his body to crash into the floor and leave the ball in the air. He took the ball with a smile. As Zhao Danlong bounced away, Wu Yu, who was standing, just looked at him. When he got up, he mocked Wu Yu and stated that he was a disgusting villain who only knew how to hide. Wu Yu reminded him that he was the one who reconciled with Jiu to sneak up on him, and now he dares to accuse him. He added that this fight is not about being careless, he just focuses on winning no matter what method he uses. Turning back, he told Wu Yu that he was a coward. But in his mind, he realized that what Wu Yu said was right, with the number of participants involved. Keeping the ball in hand was difficult. Meanwhile, Jeju kept guarding the ball so nobody could take it from him. He was determined to keep the ball with him to achieve his desired Kai condensation pill and the demon suppressing sword. When he turned around, he saw Kingming approaching attack with her sword. Fortunately, he managed to dodge her attack and throw the ball in the air. At the same time, Elder Muji informed Su Yanli that Kingming has a chance to win since she is very skilled and very persistent. Now that 60 participants are left, half of them have no intention of taking the ball, so there is not much pressure. Still, Su Yanli didn't agree with him because she knew Wu Yu hadn't made a move yet. The old man explained to her that Wu Yu's realm was low and his martial arts were not enough to defeat King Meng. An immortal man in the sky noticed that Su Yanli thinks highly of Wu Yu. Sidu Jin grinding his teeth, irritably declared that what he said was nonsense and even made a bet that if Wu Yu got the immortal ball, he would eat rotting shit. While the other participants continue to compete on the stage, King Meng thinks she will compete in the immortal ball later. A while later, as the participants were still fighting for the immortal ball, King Meng told Wu Yu that she noticed he had not played yet, so she asked him if he had any plans to compete in getting the immortal ball. Wu Yu answered yes. King Meng didn't waste time and quickly went to the middle of the stage to grab the ball from the other participants. After getting the immortal ball, she challenged the participants, saying that whoever dared to steal the ball from her, she would not hesitate to knock them down. Since there are only a few remaining participants and they know how powerful King Meng is, they do not plan to steal the ball from her because they are content to be accepted as a disciple. Holding her sword, she pointed at Wu Yu and challenged him to snatch the immortal ball from her. Wu Yu did not hesitate and granted her request. The crowd is excited about the fight between the two, and the others do not see Wu Yu's potential to defeat King Meng. Using the second form of the Eastern Sea Whale Slaying Sword, Wu Yu quickly attacked and followed up with the sea returning great whale technique. Unfortunately, King Ming dodged his attack and was ready to attack him from behind using the sword shadow of the Yugu Mountain technique. Luckily, Wu Yu dodged it and followed up with an attack using the sea sweeping slash, but King Ming dodged it. In a breathtaking battle between the two, the immortal Wang reminds Sidu Jin to prepare to eat a lot of rotting shit. Confused, Sidu Jin asked Wang what he meant. Wang explained that he thinks King Ming will lose in the ongoing battle. Back in the ongoing battle, using Wu Yu's a stern sea whale slaying sword's final form fresh eastern sea technique, King Meng was able to block it, but she was thrown off the stage due to the technique's strength. Before falling off the platform, she realized that she was on the stage and would be disqualified if she fell off, so she thought that she would be disqualified. The audience couldn't believe that a lowly novice would defeat King Meng. They also thought that without the stage, they couldn't tell who would win between the two. On the platform, before she fell, Wu Yu grabbed her hand, much to the surprise of all the audience. Stepping onto the stage, Wu Yu challenged King Ming to fight again. Instead of agreeing to what he asked, King Ming threw the immortal ball at him and fully accepted her loss. Holding the immortal ball, Wu Yu thinks that even though King Ming is young, she is so principled. One of the audience, a guy with green hair, didn't expect Wu Yu to be so powerful. The brown-haired guy agrees with him and adds that although King Ming was tired from fighting for the immortal ball, Wu Yu was also strong. At the floating hut, Su Yanli informed the old man that she won. Standing before Su Yanli, playing with his beard, Elder Muji commended Wu Yu and also praised King Meng for having principles. After the incense has been burnt, a sign that the game is over, Elder Muji announces that the contest is over. He declares that Wu Yu the Handeman won the Immortal Ball, the Kai Condensing Pill, and the Demon Suppressing Sword. Elder Muji announces that as of today, Wu Yu has set foot on the Immortal Path and has officially become a disciple of the Immortal Sect. As the people cheer for his achievements, Wu Yu, with a simple smile, still holding the immortal ball and with a closed fist, thinks that finally, he has set foot on the immortal path. Even the crown prince of the Eastern Wu would be hard-pressed to come across such great treasures as the condensation pill and the demon suppressing sword. The audience put their hand in the air with close fist as they shouted Wu Yu's name and cheered for him. With a bump close fist and palm, King Ming congratulated Wu Yu. On the other hand, Wu Yu delightfully reminded her not to mind the age gap because they could become friends. With a blushy cherry face, King Ming stuttery replied that Wu Yu was not a bad person. 
On the other hand, with tears in his eyes, Wu Dao was very happy about Wu Yu's accomplishment and added that there were no regrets in his life. The thin guy happily told Wu Dao that Wu Yu ascended to heaven in a single step, while the fat guy cheerfully stated that he could see a bright future await for Wu Yu now that he had won both the competition and the treasure. He then reminded the old man not to worry anymore about the future. At the sky, seeing that Wu Yu had succeeded, Immortal Wang was amazed at Wu Yu's rapid growth of strength. Disappointed, Sidu Jin stated that he would not let Wu Yu bask in his glory. At the stage, Elder Mu Ji faces the 30 participants who pass the exam, and informs them that they are officially disciples of his Tongshan sword sect from today onwards. He then asks the new disciples to follow him. With a bumped closed fist and open palm, Wu Yu bowed before asking Elder Mu Ji to permit him to excuse himself for a moment. He informed Elder Mu Ji that he had brought an old man from the Yan Lifing to watch the battle, and he wanted to ask someone to escort Wu Dao down the mountain. Elder Mu Ji granted his request, and Wu Yu respectfully thanked him. After that, Wu Yu went to Wu Dao, and the old man approached and commended him. With a bumped closed fist and palm, the fat guy called Wu Yu's name and corrected it to Wu Shangxian. He cheerfully told Wu Yu that the Merit Transmission Immortal was waiting for him, and he didn't need to worry for Wu Dao because they would send the old man to Yan Lifeng safely. The thin guy agreed with what the fat guy said and added that they would fool around with Wu Yu in the future. Now that he was sure that Wu Dao had someone to accompany him back home, Wu Yu trustfully left the old man to the handman of Yan Lifeng. Now that Yan Lifeng has a handman champion, the blue hair guy suggests to his companion that they should sing. The fat guy happily agreed with him, while the brown hair guy informed them that he would also go to the immortal platform next year to win the immortal ball. While the handmen were happily singing on their way home, Hua Kai and Yu noticed them from above and quickly informed Sidu Jin that the old man was the one who used to protect Wu Yu. Sidu Jin grinned and stated that he would make Wu Yu regret this time for the rest of his life. At Wangshan Peak, Elder Mu told the new disciples that the Wangshan Peak would be their new residence. Each person has a palace, and there are books in the palace, such as sect rules and records of the Dingsheng Immortal Continent which can help them understand the sect's rules in the Dingsheng Immortal Continent's power, territory, distribution of demons and monsters, etc. He informs them that outer court disciples can receive one flying fairly grass and one talisman every month. The senior brother in charge will tell them about specific matters, so they should find suitable accommodation. He ordered the new disciples, except for Wu Yu, that they could now go. After they leave, Elder Mu Ji explains the item that Wu Yu had won. The Kai Condensation pills need to be used when his martial arts are complete. The Demon Suppressing Sword is also a treasure, so it needs to be treated well. Holding a box of pills and a sword, Wu Yu politely told Elder Mu Ji that he understood. In his mind, now that he has become immortal, Wu Yu thinks he can start the path for his revenge. Elder Mu Ji permitted him to leave so that he could now go and choose his accommodation. He informs the kid that he will be a member of the Tongshan Sword Sect in the future. After picking his new residence, Wu Yu was amazed that the place had mounts and handmen. He then decided that he should go back first and beg Su Yanli to let him get his uncle son Wu Dao so the old man could enjoy his life in peace. Moments later, in the sky, while riding a big crane, Wu Yu realized that a handman and a formal disciple are truly different. Beneath, a terrified fat handman with blood stains on his clothes informs Wu Yu that something big has happened. Upon landing on the ground, Wu Yu stated that his uncle Wu Dao must be safe. He asked the handman what had happened. The handman pointed his finger inside the house and told him he'd better go in and look for himself. Wu Yu quickly ran and hoped that Wu Dao must be safe. Upon entering, the lifeless body of Wu Dao shocked him. A man he considered an uncle, a man who guided and took care of him, is now dead. He cried in pain as if someone had pierced his heart. He approaches and hugs the body of Wu Dao, and in anger tone, he repeatedly asks who did this to his uncle. Tears of pain drop in his eyes as he hugs Wu Dao tightly and asks what really happened. In a sad voice, the handman informs him that the one behind all of this is the immortal Sidu Jin. He elaborates that on their way home, they met Sidu Jin with his companion, and they killed Wu Dao, including the other handman who was singing at that time. Hearing this made Wu Yu lose himself and shout the name of Sidu Jin. During the incidents, as Sidu Jin pointed his sword, he called all the handmen trash and added that even if Wu Yu became a disciple of the immortal sect, he couldn't do anything to them. The handmen explained to Wu Yu that the other handmen tried to protect Wu Yu with their words, and as a result, Sidu Jin cut off their tongues. Still crying and full of anger, Wu Yu declared that he wouldn't let everyone die in vain after all their hard work. He bows before the body of Wu Dao and says that even if he can't repay Wu Dao's kindness, he will make sure that he will avenge his death. The handman advises Wu Yu that the immortal sect disciple cannot kill each other, otherwise, the consequences will be serious. He then reminded Wu Yu that he had newly joined the immortal sect and asked to let the matter go. Gritting his teeth, Wu Yu stated that if he didn't kill Sidu Jin today, he would swear he wouldn't be human. 
Moments later, in the Sidu Jin area, while he was sitting, Hua Kayan Yu told them that killing the old man and those blind handymen was really a relief. In a worried tone, the girl with dark brown hair reminded them that the old man and Wu Yu had a good relationship. She then asks if everything will be alright. Sidu Jin replies confidently that trash like Wu Yu can't harm them. Suddenly, Wu Yu arrived with an intense aura causing the ground to crack upon landing, and he called Sidu Jin. The bystander recognized Wu Yu for winning the competition earlier, and his arrival was obvious to them that Wu Yu had come to seek revenge. The worried girl wants to warn Sidu Jin, but Sidu Jin clarifies that there is nothing to be afraid of, besides it's four versus one. Moreover, the Tongshan Sword sect forbids outer court disciples from fighting each other. Otherwise, they will be expelled from the sect or even killed on the spot. He mocked Wu Yu and said that he didn't expect a little handman from Yan Lifeng to come. He asks if he just came to avenge the old man he killed and wonders if Wu Yu had the courage to fight him. Hua Kain Yu added that keeping the old man alive would just be a waste of food. The guy with closed eyes agrees with what Hua Kain Yu said and informs Wu Yu that it's not worth it to be expelled for just a piece of trash. The worried girl earlier gave him a warning that if he continued to fight, they would not have a choice but to kill him. Wu Yu unsheathed his sword and stated that none of them would get away with killing Wu Dao, he would make them pay. He then makes the first move and rushes forward. Seeing this makes the three little monkeys wonder if Wu Yu is really seeking to die, knowing that Sidu Jin's elder brother and younger brother have a strength that can be compared to a core disciple. As he unsheathed his sword, still arrogant and confident, Sidu Jin told his comrades to leave the matter to him. He then stated that Wu Yu became arrogant after becoming an outer court disciple, so he would make Wu Yu understand the gap in their strength. Using a frost chariot sword technique, Sidu Jin told to trash Wu Yu to eat the frozen ground. On the other hand, using his breaking the wind and wave technique, Wu Yu was unfazed and continued his attack. The two swords collided, and a cloud of smoke and massive ice could be seen in their clash. One of the swords got broken, which is from Sidu Jin, who is now starting to fall due to the attack he received. Wu Yu jumped forward to finish him off, and seeing this makes Sidu Jin's comrade confirm that Wu Yu was really going to kill Sidu Jin. They rush on to protect their arrogant comrade, who is now ordering them to finish Wu Yu off. But Wu Yu remains unfazed, with full of vengeance in his eye, he warns them not to interfere if they don't want to die. The two immortals ignore his warning and rush forward, the guy tells Wu Yu that he is the one who is going to die. At the same time, Hua Kain Yu stated that she was waiting for this time to end Wu Yu, the girl behind added that Wu Yu really wanted to kill Sidu Jin. Your brave Sidu Jin earlier, who is now crawling like a coward worm, ordered his comrade to initiate a pincer strike and not to let Wu Yu live. To his surprise, one of his comrades was thrown unconscious near him, and he asked the bystander to call his mom, what I mean is his brother. The handyman started to panic after seeing Wu Yu become crazy. As he holds the body of a girl who he calls Twilight, he gets surprised after seeing the body of Hua Kain Yu thrown behind him. He cried like a child, as if his mom didn't buy him a toy, and stated that Wu Yu became completely crazy just because of a mere old handyman. He wasn't finished crying when one of his comrades was thrown before him with blank eyes. Before losing consciousness, his comrade said that he hated Sidu Jin. Wu Yu approached him and told him that it was his turn. Your arrogant child, still crying like a baby, begging Wu Yu not to kill him. Luckily, a man arrives and shouts at Wu Yu. He asks Wu Yu how dare he touch his brother. Sidu Jin's big brother, Sidu Kang, quickly rushes toward them and asks Wu Yu if he is seeking death. Upon getting closer, your crying baby told his older brother to finish Wu Yu off. On the other hand, the three handymen were surprised by the arrival of Sidu Kang. According to the man from the left, Sidu Kang was at the seventh level of the body tempering realm, and he assumed that Wu Yu was finished. The man in the middle agreed with him and added that Sidu Kang was different from Sidu Jin because he was a true master who focused on cultivation. The guy from the right thinks the show will be fun. At the fight scene, Wu Yu informs Sidu Kang that there is no dispute between them. He then asks him to get lost because he doesn't want to kill him. In response, Sidu Kang informs him that he poked the wrong tree. He then rushes forward using his thousands mile frost technique with promo words that he will finish off Wu Yu. On the other hand, Wu Yu also rushed forward using his sea sweeping slash with promo words that manga kun script writer was so handsome. Their swords clash, and as it happens, they hold their ass not to fart. Wu Yu moved backward after realizing that his opponent was strong. On the other hand, enjoying the intense show as if they were watching an action in a cinema, the fat guy from the left assumes that Wu Yu won't be able to survive. The guy from the right with blue hair agreed with him and added that Sidu Kang is in a higher realm, so he's at least twice as strong. Eating a slice of watermelon, he says that it's the end for Wu Yu. On the other hand, laughing like a maniac as if his mom had bought his favorite toy, Sidu Jin shouted to his brother not to finish Wu Yu quickly. He wanted to chop Wu Yu up by himself. Back at the fight scene, Wu Yu jumped forward to attack using his sword but gets swayed by Sidu Kang. 
His right hand started to be frozen, and as he looked at it, he told himself that he couldn't die. He had just embarked on the immortal path, and his father's death had not yet been avenged. Sidu Kang makes another move and hits the sword of Wu Yu, causing Wu Yu's sword to be thrown away. As his hand slowly froze, he started to summon his fire, and as he did so, Sidu Jin stated that it was time for him to die. He then smiled maniacally, and with veins in his eyes, he ordered his older brother to chop Wu Yu up. Kneeling on the ground with support from his left hand, Wu Yu summoned his flame aura and thought it was not the end for him. At the hands of a small man, as the heir of the great sage, Wu Yu, the admirable and indestructible monkey king, cannot be killed by mere mortals like them, because he has golden blood that defies his immortal body. Witnessing the massive aura from Wu Yu, the handyman was stunned. The fat guy from the left wondered if Wu Yu already reached the blood exchange realm. The guy from the middle, who is holding his head like a Psyduck from Pokemon, couldn't believe how it was possible and added that Wii U just won first place in the Immortal Road before. The one from the right stated it was a miracle against the heavens. As Sidu Kang started to make his move, Sidu Jin told him that Wii U become too evil, and he ordered his brother to finish Wii U quickly. Otherwise, things will become troublesome. In response, Sidu Kang told him to shut up. The sword of Sidu Kang was about to hit Wu Yu, but Wu Yu just fiercely looked at it and stopped it single-handedly as if it was just a toy. Sidu Kang gritted his teeth and couldn't believe Wu Yu blocked his sword. The three little monkeys were in awe, their mouth widened, and they couldn't believe that Wu Yu had caught the long sword with his bare hands. As Wu Yu prepared to launch his attack, Sidu Kang ordered Sidu Jin to call their younger brother Sidu Minglang quickly. After uttering his last word, Wu Yu gave him a crispy, crunchy chicken with melting cheese and a powerful impact to his back that tore his cape. He then falls to the ground and spits green blood, seeing this makes your arrogant kid taken aback and in disbelief. On the other hand, Wu Yu was slowly approaching him with a heavy step and a black evil aura from his behind. He then declared that he wouldn't give Sidu Jin any chance. Kneeling before Wu Yu, with a stuttering voice, Sidu Jin begs to spare his life for the sake of his younger brother. Wu Yu commands him to raise his head and irritably tells him to stop dreaming. He reminds him that when he kills Wu Dao, he never thinks the same way. Sidu Jin admitted that he was wrong and added that he didn't expect that killing a trash would. He didn't finish his words after seeing the furious eyes of Wu Yu. Wu Yu gave him a powerful blow and told him that it seemed he hadn't repented enough. Due to the decisive blow, Sidu Jin was sent far away and spit green blood. As Wu Yu picks up his sword, he thinks of Wu Dao and says to himself that he will avenge his death. Pointing his sword, Wu Yu wondered if this was the immortal path, fight with the heavens, Fight with the earth, fight with men, and fight with demons. The immortal path is truly ferocious, and only those with enough strength can protect the things close to them. After his long deep thought, the bystander saw three people from above riding big cranes. It is Sidu Minglang, the younger brother of Sidu Jin and Sidu Kang. As he lands on the ground, the bystander murmurs that after Sidu Mingling condenses his kai, he becomes the direct disciple of the Supreme Protector, and he is now at the tenth level of the body tempering realm. They assume that this is definitely the end for Wu Yu. With a closed fist, while holding his sword, Sidu Mingling asks his name. Wu Yu answered that he is Wu Yu, the one who speaks aloud down to the heavens, and Wu, who swallows the heaven. After learning that his two brothers have already died, Sidu Mingling angrily declares that he will let Wu Yu experience all kinds of pain in the world before he dies. He then turns his head and asks his two seniors for permission to take Wu Yu away. His senior sister informs him that the status of the Supreme Protector is second only to the sect master, and Sidu Mingling is about to become her direct disciple, so dealing with an outer disciple will be fine. Scratching his chin, the senior brother agreed with the girl and said they would take care of everything, so he didn't need to worry. After hearing good answers from his seniors, Sidu Mingling thanked them before raising his hand to release his ice magic. He then directly blows it at Wu Yu, and as a result, Wu Yu's whole body starts to freeze with ice. Slowly turning into ice, Wu Yu was awestruck at the power of a 10th level martial art. Sidu Mingling hadn't made any moves yet, and Wu Yu couldn't move anymore. He admitted that the gap between them was at a different level, and he wondered what to do. Full of anger, Sidu Mingling summons multiple crystal ice and states he will make Wu Yu pay a thousand times over. Wu Yu closed his eyes and accepted that this was his end, even if he died, he would have no regrets. But before the story of Prince Wu Yu end, Su Yanli prevents it from happening, she blocks the crystal ice of Sidu Mingling. Seeing the grand entrance of Su Yanli makes Sidu Mingling surprised. He then calls Su Yanli a senior sister and informs her that he wants to take Wu Yu away. In response, Su Yanli explained that Wu Yu is a member of her peak and no one can take him away. In an angry tone, Sidu Mingling told her that Wu Yu killed five outer court disciples, including his two brothers, and that Wu Yu should be punished. He asks if she is trying to break the rules. Su Yanli reminded him that only the elders and master could enforce the sect rules, and Sidu Mingling was not qualified. 
The short hair girl intervened and told Su Yanli to stop being so difficult. The rules were inflexible, and the offender was alive. She then asks why Su Yanli is acting so nice. With a crossed arm, the guy beside her added that Wu Yu was the one who caused the disaster and she couldn't save him. Su Yanli informs them that she has already told the master about the matter and he will arrive sooner. It didn't take long, and the head instructor of the Fengsu Cliff came, riding a huge sword. Floating in the sky, the people beneath him bowed their heads and politely greeted the sect leader. After their greetings, Master Feng Sui explained that he had gained some understanding of today's event and knew the whole story. Sidu Mingling replies that Wu Yu killed five people in a row and violated the sect rules. He then asks the master to let him handle Wu Yu. Master Feng Sui elaborate that Sidu Jin and his four friends, who tortured and killed a weak elderly man, have lost their virtue as cultivators and are not worthy of being a disciple of the Tongshan Sword Sect. He added that Sidu Kang's death would serve as his punishment after he helped those who had lost their virtue. With a fierce look, Master Feng Sui explained that their immortal sword slays demons and eliminates evil. Attacking elderly people is a shame to all immortals. He then put his attention to Wu Yu and told him that killing five people, even if they were wrong, was too cruel. He then sentenced Wu Yu to a year of confinement to reflect on his mistakes and repent. The three handmen can't believe what Master Feng Sui said because, for them, the punishment he gave to Wu Yu was too light. On the other hand, Wu Yu thinks that Master Feng Suya is protecting him because, during his one year in confinement, Sidu Mingling won't be able to touch him. Sidu Mingling argues with the light punishment that the master gave to Wu Yu, but Master Feng Suya informs him that he needs to distinguish between good and evil and have a clear heart in order to form his golden core. With a tightly clenched fist, while his body shook in anger, Sidu Mingling gritted his teeth and told Wu Yu not to think he could escape and added that when he came out in a year, he would definitely ask him for an explanation. Wu Yu looked at him, and with self-confidence, he said that after a year, Sidu Mingling was no longer his opponent. Irritated, the guy with a cross arm voiced out that Wu Yu was good at bragging. The short hair girl added that Wu Yu was at the fifth level of the body tempering realm at the age of 15, while Sidu Mingling was already at the peak of the body tempering realm at the age of 13. Even if they gave Wu Yu 10 years, nothing would change. Master Feng Suya ordered Wu Yu to follow him to the confinement room of the reflection peak. Wu Yu make bump fist and palm and informs the master that Sun Wudao treated him like a family member, so he asks Master Feng Suya to give him seven days to guard Sun Wudao's spirit. Master Feng Suya permitted him and ordered Su Yanli to take Wu Yu back. Moments later, as they rode a big crane, Wu Yu thanked Su Yanli. Su Yanli told him that it was nothing and advised him that he must race against the time now, otherwise, she won't be able to save him after a year. The Supreme Protector and Sect Master have always been at odds, and Sidu Mingling will not let him go. In response, Wu Yu said he understood and added that one year is enough. Seven days later, Wu Yu was kneeling before the tomb of Sun Wudao and talking to him. He said that he already finished Sidu Jin to avenge him. He will come to revisit Wu Dao's grave after a year, and he will definitely be reborn and live up to Wu Dao's expectations. When the night comes, Wu Yu starts to leave, and an unseen spirit of Wu Dao emerges and says he will meet Wu Yu again. At the reflection peak, standing before Wu Yu, Master Feng Suya, inform Wu Yu that after a year, if he can defeat Sidu Minglang, he will accept Wu Yu as the fifth disciple of his Feng Su cliff, even if he has not condensed his Kai. Wu Yu wholeheartedly thanked the master, then Su Yanli said they would meet again after a year. Outside the confinement room, Master Feng Suya told Su Yanli she was right, Wu Yu has achieved great fortune and a resilient heart. He would like to be Wu Yu's guide and also protect him because this is the fate between him and Wu Yu. Su Yanli replied that Wu Yu is indeed qualified to be Master Feng Suya's disciple and added that the disciple of the Supreme Protector is becoming stronger and Master Feng Suya is also under pressure. In response, Master Feng Suya informs her that if that woman hadn't come from that place, she wouldn't have caught Master Feng Suya's eyes. Meanwhile, a massive blue dazzling aura can be seen that pierced the cloud. People saw this and said that Sidu Mingling successfully condemned his Kai. They assumed that in the future, Sidu Mingling's achievement would surpass the sect master and the supreme protector. Inside the palace, while Sidu Mingling was sitting in a lotus position, the supreme protector Lan Huian declared that starting today, Sidu Mingling would be her fifth disciple. With a bump fist and palm, Sidu Mingling politely thanked her and added that he would not disappoint his master. In his mind, he planned to finish Wu Yu after a year. At the reflection peak, inside the confinement room, while Wu Yu was sitting in a lotus position, he thought that in one year, Sidu Mingling would definitely enter the Kai Condensation Realm and become a core disciple. So Wu Yu don't have the luxury of time regarding his cultivation. 
he then started focusing on his cultivation. The sixth of Vajra's indestructible body is the golden crystal acupoints around the body. After training, the pores of the body will break open, blazing like golden stars. But the premise is that to trigger a ground fire, one must endure the immense pain of burning hundreds of acupoints throughout the body. Uyu clenched his teeth as he endured the pain. He thought cultivating this Vajra's indestructible body without great perseverance was impossible. Due to the so much pain, Wuyu slammed the ground, and as a result, the ground gets cracked. 130 days later, outside the confinement room, your old guard grandfather fanning himself to reduce the heat he felt was coming inside the confinement room. Inside, the reason for the suffering of your old guard grandfather outside was sitting comfortably in a lotus position while cultivating. Finally, he has broken through to the acupoint breaking realm. He thinks that his body has the strength of more than 800 horses in combat power, not to mention the seventh level of the body tempering realm. Now even the eighth level of the body tempering realm is no longer his opponent. Both Sidhu Mingling and Hyashin are superior to him, so he must not slack off. He then decided to begin the seventh stage of visualizing the ape mind. The seventh level of the body tempering realm is to concentrate, strengthen the spirit, and unite the mind and spirit, which is the key to entering the Kai condensation realm. Since this is about visualizing the ape mind, it must mean meditating on that unrivaled immortal ape and defeating the Buddha. A monkey king appeared. He was the great sage of the heavenly palace and the immortal realm and fought to defeat the Buddha. He stated that those who are destined should take on his mantle, go against the sky and destroy the world. Enduring so much pain in his heart, Wuyu declared that he wouldn't give up, he would be reborn, and his blood feud had not been avenged, so he must persevere. Outside, your grandfather stated that Wuyu is truly a madman, and his practice is full of crying and howling. Striving hard is good, but unfortunately, Sidhu Mingling has already condensed his kai and ascended to the sky. But Wuyu doesn't know about this yet, and if he knew, your grandfather assumed that Wuyu would probably be scared to death. Two hundred years later, as he raised his hand with fire, Wuyu was delighted that he had achieved the seventh level of the body tempering realm. He can now unleash the power of 1,500 horses, and this is already close to the tenth level of martial arts. He decided to practice more but momentarily stopped when he remembered his sister. He had been away for so long and wondered how his sister was doing now. At the Dongyuwu State, people gather to see the new emperor. Above the people who are carrying the palanquin are the new emperor Yuan Hao, who is sitting in his royal chair. From the emperor's right side is Princess Wu Wu, sister of Wu Yu. To his left side is the traitor consort Zai. The new emperor Yuan Hao announces that he is worshipping his ancestors today. He then thanked the founding emperor and all the martyrs of the past dynasties. The crowd had different points of view, the guy wearing purple kimono thinks that the new emperor is truly heroic, while the guy with a cross arm calls the new emperor a weakling and compares him to a little girl. The guy behind them wearing blue kimono stated that the crown prince Wu Yu is truly heroic and added that when Marshal Wu's son caused trouble, Wu Yu finished him without saying a word. He wondered if the new emperor could even dare to kill a chicken. The guy in the green kimono warned them and told them that mentioning the name of Crown Prince Wu Yu could be their end. On the other hand, Consort Zai asks a servant what the commotion is, the servant informs her that someone caused trouble and mentions the Crown Prince Wu Yu. Being a heartless woman because her healthy pair of melons covered it all, Consort Zai ordered him to finish them by dismemberment and declare to the whole country that no one should dare say the name of Crown Prince Wu Yu. Anyone who dares to mention the Crown Prince's name must exterminate, including their family. Princess addresses her as a queen mother and asks if she weren't afraid of offending their ancestors if today's ancestral worship becomes so bloody. Since what Princess Wu Wu said was true, Consort Zai declared that those guilty must take outside the country and kill, because breaking the rules is not acceptable. Yuan Hao intervenes and asks Wu Wu if she knows that a hero appeared on the 38th island in the east, uniting the 38th island and establishing the eastern kingdom on the sea. Wu Wu responds that she has heard about it and they are just a group of cold-blooded thieves who do nothing but evil. Emperor Yuan Hao irritably told her not to say those words and added that the new emperor of the eastern kingdom, the ninth kingslayer, wanted to marry her. Marriage between the two countries will benefit the common people. He stated that she couldn't refuse. Princess Wu Wu told him that the Ninth King Slayer was a homicidal monster who had committed all kinds of evil, and the only thing that would marry that monster was her corpse. She then turns around, and before leaving, she informs him that allying with such a ruthless group will lead to the destruction of the country. She also added that the gap between him and Wu Yu is abyssal. Emperor Yu and Hao got angry and called her a son of a cat and said that Wu Yu had already died. He asks if she can't see the situation clearly. Consort Zai patted him on his shoulder to calm him down and advise him not to get angry because there are still about six months left. She added that she had many ways to obediently make Wu Wu marry the Ninth King Slayer. Yuan Hao grinned and stated that he would make Wu Wu's life worse than death when that time came. 
Meanwhile, before Wu Yu left the reflection peak, your grandfather waved his hand and told Wu Yu to take care and come back next time. Wu Yu opened the door with a smile on his face, looking at the sky, he realizes that one year of confinement seems like a lifetime. Floating in the sky with two big cranes behind her, Su Yanli congratulates him on seeing the light again. Since he is being released today, Su Yanli sent him a crane to make it easier for him to return. She then handed him a golden flame dragon slaying technique, the top-notch martial art technique given to him by her master, which is similar to Wu Yu's previous sword movements. Holding a scroll, Wu Yu delightfully thanked her. Su Yanli informs him that Sidhu Mingling condensed his Kai almost a year ago, and she advises Wu Yu to be careful. In addition, King Ming has been helping Wu Yu to take care of things so that he can return anytime. In response, Wu Yu told her he wouldn't return yet because he wanted to spend more time with his uncle son Wu Dao. Now that he has become an outer disciple, Su Yanli suggested that he should stop wearing clothes meant for a handyman. She will send someone to give Wu Yu the clothes fit for a cultivator. She added that the immortal path is long, and he can only rely on himself. After her long advice, Wu Yu thanked her. Before leaving, Su Yanli turned her head and said she was looking forward to Wu Yu becoming her junior brother. With a clenched fist, while holding a scroll, Wu Yu thinks he will never let Su Yanli and the leader down. A while later, at the Yan Lifeng, in front of Sun Wu Dao's tomb, Wu Yu is kneeling and talking to Wu Dao. After that, he took out his sword and practiced the golden flame dragon slaying technique that Su Yanli had given him earlier. This golden flame dragon slaying technique is indeed very suitable for him. He realizes that having a master is different. Although the golden dragon flame slaying technique has greatly improved his combat power, according to senior sister Su Yanli, it will still be difficult to challenge Sidhu Minglang. Unfortunately, breaking through the 8th level of Vajra's indestructible body takes 49 days of burning the body with flames, which is a bit difficult. His training was interrupted when King Ming and his comrades arrived. He asked why she was there. King Ming unsheathes her sword and informs him that she has come to challenge Wu Yu. In response, Wu Yu asks if they aren't friends and adds that they just met, so they should have done the duel later. King Ming explained that many people were looking down on him and said that Wu Yu already defeated her before, so she wondered why others were still looking down on him. Hearing those words made Wu Yu think that this little girl is intentionally trying to lose to him to help him establish his prestige. He realized that the word friend carries a considerable weight in King Meng's heart. Wu Yu then positioned himself and challenged King Ming to come. On the other hand, a man with blue hair stated there was no need to fight because King Ming was already at the 8th level of body tempering realm, and Wu Yu had no chance to defeat her. The green hair guy added that King Ming had mastered the three green blood techniques, and she could kill Wu Yu with her sword aura alone. In response, the blue hair guy assumes that Wu Yu will just humiliate himself. Unbeknownst to them, an assassin jumped forward to attack, and King Ming sees the assassin was about to attack Wu Yu from behind. She then warns Wu Yu to watch out before clashing her sword with the assassin. Wu Yu jump backward while the two continue fighting. Unfortunately, King Ming is no match for the assassin, and she loses her sword. While this happens, the assassin tells her she can't meddle in other people's business if she doesn't want to die. Seeing that King Ming was about to face her death, the two little monkeys lost themselves, they wondered who the strong assassin was, and King Ming couldn't even last a single move. Luckily, before King Ming could see Sun Wu Dao, Wu Yu blocked the assassin's sword. Even though he managed to block the attack, Wu Yu was still sent a few meters away due to his opponent's strength. He gritted his teeth after knowing that his opponent was powerful. Holding her dagger, the girl assassin commended him for blocking her attack. After seeing how Wu Yu blocked the attack, the two comrades of King Ming can't believe that Wu Yu is stronger than her. Holding her right arm, King Ming also wondered how Wu Yu could block that attack. Standing before his opponent, Wu Yu looked back and ordered King Ming that they should go first. King Ming answered affirmatively and advised Wu Yu to be careful. Before leaving, King Ming looked back at Wu Yu as she thinks she will first look for senior sister Su Yanli to ask for help. Now the two were left alone, they could do whatever they wanted, hug each other, play throwing hot dogs to the cave, or eat some hot dog and peanuts. But it's a battle, so the assassin asks if he really wants to save the little girl and informs him that anyone who dares to attack her will die. She then tells Wu Yu not to worry because ten breaths are enough to finish him, afterward, King Ming will join him. In response, Wu Yu asks if Sidhu Mingling sent her. Releasing a blue aura through her sword, the assassin asks so what if Sidhu Mingling did? To her, Wu Yu is just a Kai condensing pill. She then rushed forward, and their swords clashed with a dazzling spark. The assassin wondered if Sidhu Mingling really lost everything because of this mere Kai condensation pill. Wu Yu was sent crash into the tree due to that powerful attack, and she rushed forward to finish him off. Wu Yu notices the assassin's speed and aura. She is a master of the tenth level of the body tempering realm. At some point, this used to be his life goal. Before her blade could hit Wu Yu, he managed to duck and dodge the attack. 
The assassin makes another blow, and Wu Yu jumps to dodge. She makes another slash, but Wu Yu blocks it while in the air. The assassin jumps forward, and as she does so, she informs Wu Yu that there are still three more breaths left to finish him. Floating in the sky while waiting for his opponent, Wu Yu realizes that the assassin overestimates herself, so it's time for him to fight back. He makes a hand technique to use his Monkey King mental visualization and follows up with the Golden Flame Dragon slaying technique. The assassin clenched her teeth in disbelief, Wu Yu swung his sword and managed to hit his opponent, and as a result, she lost her dagger and was thrown back to the ground. As she bumps to the ground, Wu Yu follow her to make a final blow, but before he does so, the girl begs him to spare her life. Wu Yu stopped and thought that this person's cultivation was so high, and she must also be a disciple of the sect. Knowing that he just came out of confinement, Wu Yu didn't finish her. He then stood and told her to get lost, he wanted Sidu Mingling to come by himself next time. In a flirting voice, the girl asks if he doesn't know how to show pity and tender love for women and how he can be so ruthless. Wu Yu looked at her with dagger eyes and told her to get out. As Wu Yu walks away, the assassin picks something inside her shorts. She asks why he is so fierce and then throws a paper talisman. Wu Yu notice it, but it's too late for him to avoid it, a massive fire surrounds his whole body, and he screams in pain. The girl moved her hair, laughed, and told Wu Yu that he couldn't even recognize the golden talisman. He is really a country bumpkin from a backwater place. She then revealed that Sidu Mingling is concentrating on competing for the spot of supervisor of the Zion Kingdom, and he doesn't have the time to pay attention to a small fry like Wu Yu. She then turns around and blubbers that with Wu Yu's ability, he still dares to challenge Sidu Mingling, who has even mastered the technique of controlling lighting. She then called Wu Yu a dumbass but got stopped when she heard that Wu Yu replied that the only dumbass here was she. The assassin then turned her head just to see that Wu Yu was already closed behind her and was about to hit her. Wu Yu grabbed her by the neck and cursed her with multiple words. As he did so, the girl wondered how is this possible. The golden flame talisman condensed the essence of the flame. Even someone in the early stage of the Kai condensation realm will die from it. She was confused about why Wu Yu hadn't burnt to ashes yet and noticed that Wu Yu's breath was even stronger. Knowing that it's the end for her, she makes an offer to Wu Yu, saying that she will be his subordinate from now on. She will let Wu Yu do whatever he wants with her, just not to kill her. Still holding the assassin, Wu Yu looked at her piercingly before throwing her with his flame and stating that he let her live previously, yet she tried to kill him, he is done for being generous. Before leaving, Wu Yu told her to enjoy the flame she brought herself. Moments later, Su Yanli arrived with her crane and asked what happened to Wu Yu. She explained that King Ming had come to her and said something had happened to him, so she came to see what really happened. She then asks if he is alright before thinking that Wu Yu's aura has become stronger again, but it feels a little chaotic. Wu Yu politely told her not to worry and elaborated that it was a good thing he was hit with the golden flame talisman, and that if it were a different attribute, he would surely die. He added that the misfortune he faced allowed him to break through a small realm, but not yet stable. Wu Yu asks if Su Yanli knows what's going on with the supervisor of the Zion Kingdom. Su Yanli explained that even if the supervisor immortal leaves the sect to take charge of the mortal Zion Kingdom, mortals will call them immortal. The Zion Kingdom has a vast land with abundant resources, and mortals don't know about spiritual objects. The Zion Kingdom supervisor can reap many benefits, so they are very lucrative jobs. In addition, the strict rules of the sect make it almost the only opportunity to leave the sect. Hearing this makes Wu Yu think that it was the bastard Hayashim. Wu Yu asks if the Eastern Yu Wu Kingdom is also within the scope of the supervision of the Immortal Kingdom. Su Yanli answered affirmatively and added that the current supervisor of the Immortal Kingdom in the Wu Kingdom is Hayashim. He is a disciple in the Kai Condensation realm of the Zhongyuan Taoist sect. In the next decade, the Tongshan Sword sect will take over. The sect will send a new Immortal Kingdom supervisor to take over from Hayashin. Now that Wu Yu knows that Hayashin is about to return to the sect, he sees this as an opportunity to finish him. He then asks Su Yanli if he can become the supervisor of the Immortal Kingdom in the Eastern Yu Wu Kingdom. In response, Su Yanli said it was impossible. According to the rules, only core disciples who have condensed their Kai can participate in the competition to become the Immortal Kingdom supervisor. Because this matter is very important to Wu Yu, he wondered if there was no alternative way. Su Yanli told him that she would ask the master. However, there are two things that she needs to explain to Wu Yu. Firstly, Sidu Mingling will also compete, and if Wu Yu participates, Sidu Mingling will definitely use his connections to fight against Wu Yu. The second thing is that Sidu Mingling has already mastered Taoism. With Wu Yu's current strength, he is no match for Sidu Mingling. If Wu Yu can't become stronger before the competition, he will definitely die. She then revealed that only seven days remained before the competition started. She asks if Wu Yu really wants to participate. Wu Yu gritted his teeth as he thought only seven days were left. Still, he had already planned how he would finish Hayashin before returning to the Zhongyuan Taoist sect, so he asked Su Yanli to arrange the matter because he would participate. 
Su Yanli approved his request and told him she would send Wu Yu to the Immortal War Palace to participate in the battle to become the Immortal Kingdom supervisor. She will handle the situation so that Wu Yu can cultivate in peace. With a bump fist and palm, Wu Yu bow his head before thanking his senior sister. Looking at the departing Su Yanli, Wu Yu thinks of the training he should do. He just broke through the 8th level of the Vajra indestructible body, the Bright Stone Spirit Child, so he needs to stabilize his breakthrough. As for the 9th level transformation of the Immortal Ape, it requires the blood of the Immortal Ape to act as a guide to successfully cultivate. He felt that it was really a bit troublesome. The next day at the Duabao Valley, as wandering in the market, he realized that there were really a lot of things in the place, including top-notch martial art techniques, Taoism, magic treasures, immortal elixirs, and pills. Unfortunately, he couldn't find what he needed. He then decided to check one last time, and he would leave if there were still nothing of note. When he turned his head, something caught his attention. He felt that one of the items was calling him. The ape's blood glows in his eyes, and out of curiosity, he picks up the ape's blood, sits, and asks the vendor about the item. The vendor informs him that it was the monkey head fruit known for nourishing the blood and the body. It costs 30 tails of gold. When he stated that he would take the item and as he got his money, the vendor irritably raised the price to 1,000 tails of gold. Wu Yu was surprised at the sudden price change and asked what the vendor meant. The vendor irritably explained that it's his stuff, so he can sell it in any amount for as much as he want. The men recognize him and remember that he is the one who killed those people at Mingxian Peak, yet he dares to buy things from Mingxian Peak. The guy in the middle stated that no one would sell anything to Wu Yu here and added that he heard Wu Yu and Sidu Mingling were competing against each other over the immortal supervisor position. The guy at the right, who is laughing, revealed that Sidu Mingling is intentionally doing this. Hearing this makes Wu Yu realize that the vendor is from Mingxian Peak, which explains why he is trying to spite Wu Yu. While Wu Yu is holding the ape blood, the vendor ordered him to put down the item if he didn't have 1000 tails. Knowing that this item is the most special item amongst the others, and it's hard to find anything similar anywhere else. Wu Yu plans to snatch the object when the vendor leaves the Duabao Valley. Suddenly Sidu Minglin intervenes, saying that Wu Yu doesn't have the amount of that money, but he has, so he will take the item. The vendor picks up the item and offers it to Sidu Minglang, since senior brother Minglang likes it. He will give it to him as a gift. He then asked if there was anything Sidu Minglang needed. Holding the ape blood, Sidu Mingling confronted Wu Yu and informed him that his people saw Wu Yu wandering around at the market, so he bought this thing that looked very important to Wu Yu. Irritated, Wu Yu asks what he wants. Sidu Mingling smirks, since Wu Yu like ape blood, he will give it to him. He looks at Wu Yu with a mocking eye, crashes the ape's blood, and drops it to the ground before ordering Wu Yu to take the item and not to mind him. He then put his feet on the item and squeezed it, on the other hand, Wu Yu just looked at it while calming himself. The three men know that Sidu Mingling is just humiliating Wu Yu and waiting to take action, and if Wu Yu dares to take action, Sidu Mingling would have a reason to kill him. With serious eyes, while holding his anger, Wu Yu realized that senior sister Su Yanli was right. Judging from Sidu Mingling's aura, he was no match for him right now. Knowing that the ape blood was very important, Wu Yu swallowed his pride and tried to pick it up. As he did so, the three mutant ninja turtles made fun of the scene. It was their first time seeing such a coward and shameless. After picking up the item, Wu Yu stood up and put it inside his clothes. He thanked brother Sidu Mingling for being so generous. However, children are children, they always like to be impulsive, and giving the item to Wu Yu will cause Mingling's defeat, and he will regret it. He then started to walk. Upon getting closer to Mingling, Wu Yu warned him not to cry when the time had come. As Wu Yu leave, Sidu Mingling is confused about what Wu Yu says, he knows that Wu Yu can't defeat him alone, so how could he say such a thing? Is he a son of a cat? Looking at Wu Yu with a clenched fist, Sidu Mingling calms himself, his master once said that his true future opponent would be Ding Shang Shenzu's genius. Useless banter with an ant will only kill his motivation. The sun goes down, the stars come out, and all that counts is here and now. My universe will never be the same. I'm glad you came. Hey, Henry, you son of a cat, are you singing right now? Sorry, sir, reading the script made me remember the song Glad You Came, that song by The Wanted. Okay, fine, I like that song too, stop singing and get back to your narration. Thank you sir, okay guys, let's get back to our story. The sun goes down, but no stars come up, at Wu Yu's place, a handyman knocks on his door before entering. He informs Wu Yu that senior Su Yanli has sent him new clothes, in response, Wu Yu tells him to put them on the table. He then continued what he was doing. As he refined the ape blood, which was thought to be missing with no hope of being found in the Azure Waves Mountains, he couldn't believe that Sidu Mingling would personally give it to him. After refining the ape blood, Wu Yu was delighted at the result. He will use this drop of blood to complete the immortal ape transformation. He puts his hand before his face and wonders what expression Sidu Mingling will have when he finds out that he personally assisted Wu Yu in cultivating the immortal ape transformation. 
The day for the competition has come. At the Immortal War Palace, people gathered inside the big Colosseum to witness the event. The Supreme Protector Lan Huion is sitting on a metal chair with many sharp blades. On her left is Elder Muji, and to her right is one of the examiners from the Road to Immortality. The audience wonders why the Supreme Protector takes charge of the Immortal Kingdom competition instead of Elder Muji. Another answer is that Sidu Minglang is her apprentice, and she treats him well. Elder Muji announces that there are 12 contestants, each pair will form a group, and the winner will obtain the status of Immortal Kingdom Supervisor. He then calls the name of the first group, Changxing versus Hitung. With a crossed arm, Sidu Mingling noticed that Wu Yu didn't come. His subordinate told him that he knew Wu Yu wouldn't come because he was just trying to make sure that Sidu Mingling wouldn't finish him. Knowing that when Mingling becomes the Immortal Kingdom supervisor, he will leave the sect, and Wu Yu can live for a few more years. As Sidu Mingling expected in a shrinking turtle, Wu Yu has a good plan. The competition started, and the two participants started their intense battle. Two hours later, Elder Mu Ji announces the last battle, and the contestant is Sidu Mingling versus Wu Yu. After realizing he can't see Wu Yu, Elder Mu Ji asks where he is. The crowd was murmuring and bringing out what happened at the Duabao Valley, and they assumed Wu Yu was too ashamed to come. Playing with his beard, Elder Muji asks Su Yanli to look for Wu Yu. Otherwise, he will be disqualified. Su Yanli sighs like a toro before giving an affirmative answer. But before she could leave, Wu Yu arrived riding a big crane. He landed on the stage with a massive flame aura. Wearing his new clothes, Wu Yu calmly reported that he was now here. The crowd was surprised by Wu Yu's arrival, they wondered if he was looking for death, and they thought Wu Yu was too arrogant to believe he could defeat Sidu Minglang. With a sweet smile, Su Yanli felt the change in Wu Yu's aura. Behind her, one of the examiners from the new disciple competition. Putting his wooden fan before his face, he addresses Wu Yu as his little junior brother. He explained that Wu Yu has been reborn and will definitely win because Wu Yu is someone he have always valued since the Road to Immortality competition. His name is Mo Shishu. He closed his wooden fan and pointed to Wu Yu before calling him a junior brother and cheering Wu Yu to teach the little brat Mingling a lesson. At the stage, Sidu Mingling asks if Wu Yu is not ashamed after picking up the ape blood that he dropped. In response, Wu Yu asks if Mingling can still remember how frustrated he was the day Wu Yu finished his two brothers and he couldn't do anything. Hearing this makes Mingling burst into anger and declare that he would enjoy erasing Wu Yu. He unsheathed his sword, released his thunder aura, and looked fiercely at Wu Yu. Wu Yu smirked after seeing that Mingling had lost his composure and that he was already prepared for this kind of pre-combat confrontation. The frustrated Sidu Mingling rushes forward with promo words that Wu Yu is a son of a cat. Sidu Mingling jumped on, the ground scattered with thick smoke, and Wu Yu was unfazed before him. He released his flame aura with a golden forest sky covering technique, and their sword clashed, and the ground crumbled. In this intense battle, Sidu Mingling was the one who was sent flying away. After seeing that Wu Yu successfully overpowered the arrogant Sidu Mingling, Su Yanli, Mo Shishu, Elder Muji, and the crowd was in disbelief, and they were stunned. The Supreme Protector was also in awe, she realized why Feng Suya cared so much for Wu Yu, just by relying on the strength of the body tempering realm. Mingling was blown away. Back to the stage, Sidu Mingling pierced his sword to the floor and wondered what was happening. He clenched his teeth, raised his sword, and shouted the boundless heaven's might and superior immortal, divine thunder sword technique. Oh my, what kind of technique do we have here? Before you could finish shouting this technique, I think you were already sleeping if Saitama is your opponent. Anyway, the cloud turned into darkness, and a thunderbolt started to emerge from it. Sidu Mingling smirked, the thunderbolt turned purple and again before he threw this attack at Wu Yu, he called it a powerful thunderbolt, a corrosive attribute, and boom, it hit Wu Yu, but he managed to jump back to avoid the attack. Still, it was fast as lightning, so even though he jumped, Wu Yu was still hit by this thunderbolt and was roasted like a chicken. The body of Wu Yu was covered with dark smoke, so Sidu Mingling assumed that Wu Yu couldn't withstand that strike. Slowly emerging from the thick smoke, Wu Yu gritted his teeth. On the other hand, Mingling declared that the game was over. Wu Yu rushed forward, and as he did so, he was aware that this kind of injury was nothing for his indestructible Vajra's body. Sidu Mingling was surprised after seeing Wu Yu still alive, and he planned to make blow Wu Yu up. To protect himself, Sidu Mingling used a thunder shield. But Wu Yu's sword quickly destroyed his shield, and he was hit in the arm, thrown away, and bumped near the audience. Holding his sword, Wu Yu stated that after Sidung Mingling looked down on him and used a thunder shield, in the end, he just tried to summon more thunderbolts. After Sidu Mingling stood up, the two men noticed that Mingling's right arm had gone. From the other side of the crowd, King Ming was happily cheering for Wu Yu and shouted that he won and Sidu Mingling lost. While Mingling clenched his teeth and couldn't accept what had happened, Lan Huion talked to him through telepathy. Wu Yu has become Mingling's heart demon, he will never pass this level if he doesn't kill him. She ordered him to eliminate Wu Yu without any hesitation. 
and she will take care of the rest. Before Elder Muji announced the winner, Sidhu Mingling interrupted him and said he hadn't lost yet. He raised his sword and struck it to his body, veins emerged from his face, and in an instant, he turned into a demon, and he called it a thunder demon possession. People felt the terrible aura from Minglang, and the girl beside King Ming stated that this technique was forbidden, she thought Wu Yu would surely die. Knowing that the leader was not present, the decision was not up to the Supreme Protector. Su Yanli confronted the Supreme Protector and asked why Sidhu Minglang used the forbidden technique. Mo Shishu shouted at Minglang and informed him that he had violated the sect rules and was no longer qualified to participate in the competition. He then asked Sidhu Mingling to leave. Seeing this makes Wu Yu think that he just met Mo Shishu twice, yet he is willing to help him this much and seems like an ally. Unfortunately, Lan Huian will definitely not allow them to stop Sidhu Mingling. As Wu Yu expected, Lan Huian raised his hand and trapped the two. Now that she couldn't help Wu Yu, Su Yanli shouted at him to be careful. Sidhu Mingling started to attack, using a thunder demon that destroyed the world and trapped Wu Yu inside a circle. Seeing this makes King Ming worried for the safety of Wu Yu, while others think it's the end for Wu Yu. Even Sidhu Mingling method is a bit awry, it's all about winners and losers, and no one cares about anything else. When Mingling was about to finish Wu Yu, Wu Yu reminded him that he would regret giving the monkey head. A huge aura in monkey form can be seen behind Wu Yu, and he is transforming like a Super Saiyan. The trap Sidhu Mingling made was engulfed by the massive yellow aura from Wu Yu, it burst and pierced the sky. When the enormous aura disappeared, Wu Yu was transformed into Sailor Moon, what I mean is, Wukong, the Monkey King, but in this man, well, he is the Great Sage. After seeing Wu Yu's transformation, they were all surprised and shocked. The girl beside King Ming wondered if it was a Taoism technique, but she knew Wu Yu hadn't condensed his Kai yet. On the other hand, Lan Huian knew this was not from a Dao or some taboo technique, it was from a transformation in the blood vessels. She wonders what's going on with Wu Yu. At the stage, Wu Yu realizes that this immortal ape is really wild, giving him an irresistible urge to roar. Sidhu Mingling rushes forward and addresses Wu Yu as a beast. He will kill him and feed to the dogs. With a flame dragon surrounding him, Wu Yu shouted like a warrior before clashing with Sidhu Mingling. A massive wave of impact occurred when their weapons collided. Both of them used their strength and held their sword tightly. But then again, Sidhu Mingling has swayed away, and Wu Yu overpowered him. Wu Yu follow him into the air to finish him off. The crowd was in disbelief after they saw Sidhu Mingling's body slowly vanishing, and Wu Yu just stood like an action star surrounded by a flame dragon while holding his sword. Mo Shishu wondered if he was blind or something, while beside him, Su Yanli asked for a jumbo hot dog to throw to her mouth, I mean, her mouth widened in shock after learning that Wu Yu had such a method. Frustrated, Lan Yuan called Wu Yu a beast and asked how dare he kill her disciple. At the stage, Wu Yu sighs in relief after defeating Sidhu Minglang. However, he is aware that Lan Huian will not let go of this matter. The Supreme Protector floats in the sky and asks why a mere ant dares to provoke her. She will make Wu Yu understand the consequences. Wu Yu felt the heavy aura from Lan Huian, and it managed to kneel him down. He asked himself if this was the strength of a Golden Core Immortal, there was a profound difference compared to him. The Supreme Protector summons eight blades and throws them at him. Wu Yu can't do anything but wonder if he is going to die like this. The guy in green felt pity for a genius like Wu Yu to fall like this, the guy in brown blubber that Wu Yu should know what he was messing with before provoking the Supreme Protector. King Ming can't help but shout stop. Holding an imaginary jumbo hot dog, Su Yanli thinks it's all over. Before multiple blades could hit Wu Yu, a divine sword was thrown near him, creating a yellow shield to protect him. Seeing a huge sword before him, Wu Yu paused for a moment. Floating in the air, Master Feng Suya declared that Wu Yu would be his fifth disciple of Feng Su Cliff from now on. Not trapped anymore, Su Yanli was happy for Wu Yu because he was now an apprentice of her master. With a sweet smile, bump fist and palm, Wu Yu pays his respect to his master. On the other hand, the Supreme Protector just walked out as if nothing had happened. Mo Shishu laughed a little before saying that Wu Yu hid his ability very well, and today, he makes the old Feng proud. He then congratulates him on becoming the Immortal Kingdom supervisor. Su Yanli was very delightful now that Wu Yu was officially her junior brother. In response, Wu Yu thanked the two seniors for their kindness. Wu Yu is so happy, finally, he has become the supervisor of the Immortal Kingdom and can now return to the state of Wu. The girl in black and the guy in green were amazed that Wu Yu won the competition, while one of their comrades who had orange hair was irritated and told them not to envy Wu Yu and that they should go. Master Feng Xue asks the reason why Wu Yu is competing for the Immortal Kingdom Supervisor position. Wu Yu revealed that he originally came from the Yu Wu Kingdom and was the true crown prince of the Wu Kingdom. 
playing with his beard. Master Fang Suya informs Wu Yu that although the Wu Kingdom of Eastern Yu is located in a remote area, their Tongtian sword sect has always looked down on it and has never sent a supervisor. However, that Heashin fellow has been entrenched there for decades. Master Fang Suya thinks it will not be easy to deal with Heashin. He then raised his hand and summoned a bunch of different swords. He told Wu Yu that he would give Wu Yu a magic weapon that would give him more security when dealing with Heashin. He suggested that Wii U pick two types of magical weapons, gold and fire long swords. Seeing this different kind of mighty sword, Wu Yu was astonished. Master Fang Suya asked why he hadn't chosen yet. He should be able to tell at a glance which attributes of which magic sword match. Wu Yu responded to his master that it's not about the matching attributes. What he wants is not a sword but a staff. Scratching his beard, Master Fang Suya told Wu Yu that staff might suit him well. However, he doesn't really have one. Behind him, the two seniors were disappointed and confused after hearing that Wu Yu only want is a stick. Elder Muji intervened and revealed that he has a pure gold demon subduing staff weighing 3,000 pounds, equipped with a Lihuo formation. He thinks Wu Yu should be able to use it fully within 10 years. Master Fang Suya asks that if he brings out the staff, he will give him a sword in exchange. Elder Muji didn't waste time and quickly summoned the 3,000 pounds golden staff. Wu Yu's eyes spark after seeing the demonic staff, and he thinks it's perfectly suited for him. Master Fang Suya informs Wu Yu that Heashin is a treacherous person who should be punished. He ordered Wu Yu that if he arrived in the state of Wu, he couldn't be loose because the Zhang Yuan Daoist sect would not turn hostile to the Tongshan sword sect due to the death of a disciple. Holding the golden staff, Wu Yu answered affirmatively. In his mind, he could finally take his revenge on all who betrayed and tried to kill him. Immortal Heashin, Consort Zai, and Wonking, just stay still because Wu Yu is coming to erase all of you. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you won't crave a jumbo hot dog and don't transform into a Sailor Moon. Please continue supporting my channel. By the way, the manhwa ends in chapter 16.